Game started. Okay, here's a game. Let's see. My turn to play. Uh, let's try e4. <clears throat> and a Karo Khan. I don't think I've played one of these in a while. Um, the advanced variation. And uh, doing the normal stuff. Just uh, development. And uh, I'm going to develop my knight to um, the other knight <clears throat> to d2 to avoid blocking the c pawn. And then maybe go to uh, b3. So I'm blocking my bishop in, but that's just temporary. Now they're, they're all liberated. And I always have to watch out for this uh, c4 break, but it's not c5, rather, but it's not happening right now, I don't think. And then at some point I can go after this uh, bishop here, which is a bit exposed. So maybe here, before I castle, and while the knight is blocking this uh, the view of the queen onto this square. I'll harass this bishop. So in theory, having the two bishops is good for me. Um, so it's to my advantage to take that guy off. But black usually uh, gets some compensating advantages. Like, for example, if he moves the bishop here and I take it, he can open the uh, h-file, which could lead to an attack over here, but maybe not in this particular position. Ah, he just ignores it. Okay, <clears throat> let's see, if I take the bishop now, uh, he has to take back because if he just takes a pawn, for example, I will um, grab a knight and just be a piece up. If he pushes, then I can move my knight. So I can go ahead and take the bishop. And then I will try and defend this uh, pawn on d4, which is coming under attack from the uh, that pawn on c5 and the knight, <clears throat> the knight on f5, coordinating their attacks. And it looks like it'll be safe for me to castle since uh, the h-file didn't get opened up. So I think my plan is castle and push the f-pawn. Maybe the G-pawn, chase the knight away, push through the center, basically. And uh, black, black is a little bit behind in development. He hasn't uh, developed this bishop yet, and he hasn't castled yet. So there he goes. Okay, so let's castle. Now, uh, black could also castle on the queen side. It's worth thinking about. And I guess he also has to decide whether he wants to exchange here or um, push on, try and clamp down on the queen side and create a closed position. Yeah, castling on the king side. So I think um, my plan is just to push ahead with the pawn storm on the king's side, even though it's in front of my own king. Uh, the center is a little bit blocked here, and um, my pieces are in uh, pretty good shape to just... Um... Yeah, actually, let, let's uh, think about this. He has the move, after I play, say, g4, for example, he has the move knight to h4. Let's start with f4. <clears throat> I 
And one thing he has going is he's got this queen and his bishop lined up on this diagonal, so he has a lot of, a lot of control over these dark squares. But if I could play, you know, <clears throat> g4 and f5, and he exchanges, I'll get a pair of pawns right here in an open g file, and then I can uh, try and bring my pieces in. And if his knight is sitting here on h4, um, well, it is attacking the, um, it is attacking this uh, f5 square, isn't it? That might be a, a hitch in my plan. <clears throat> Oh, the, that square is defended by the rook. I guess it's still okay. And the idea might be something like a bishop, bishop h5, queen g4, and uh, possibly a rook lift. Need to get this bishop out of the way so the other rook can come into the game. So I'm playing uh, Zaki from the United States. I hadn't noticed his rating before. He has a very high rating. He probably is uh, pretty strong tactically. <clears throat> I may, may have to be careful here. Well, you should always be careful. Let's see, okay, squares for the knight. Um, looks like there's only one, so don't think about it for too hard. Don't think for too long on the easy moves. Oh, 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 that's what it is. <laughs> just as I was about to say, just as I was saying, he's probably got something tactically uh, planned. That's pretty good. Uh, that, that knight move uh, blocks the defense. Uh, you know, I was counting on the bishop to take the knight there. Let's see, so if I move the queen... Um, he has this square here, which is a little bit annoying. I move the queen again, he takes that rook. Um, and I can't take back. So I want to keep a defense of this square and move my queen uh, maybe out this way. And um, then, then chase his knight away. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, that was, that was kind of an instructive sequence, which is... Uh, he wants to get his knight to this square e6. He has it here on uh, f5 already. He wants to get to e3. He has it on f yeah f5 to e3, and um, and the way to get there is to kick my knight over here and force me to block my own bishop. And really, I had no choice at that point, so I was already losing. So this bishop is in a good spot. So I'll bring the knight over. And uh, play on down down the exchange. Um, I have, I think, some kind of a good position here. So I'm not uh, not giving up just yet. question is, do I want to push on with um, f5 immediately or play uh, g4 then f5? Uh, <clears throat> so he's starting to clamp down on that idea. So I think uh, that means g4 is required. So g4, knight g3, and uh, f5 is my idea here. And if he puts his bishop on this square, h4, um, I may delay the development of the knight for a move. Well, the knight could go to this square. It could go to... Uh, the knight could go to e3. Okay, that's that makes it tough. <clears throat> 
So I can take on Passant, and he can take back, and he'll have an attack on this uh, pawn on uh, f4 with his rook, but it's defended. And uh, he'll, he'll have this backwards pawn here he'll have to deal with. So I think that's the way to do it. So on passant, maybe rook takes. Then um, still going to be a bit tricky here. Maybe uh, my knight to uh, g3. Lift the bishop and bring the rook over. I think that's the way to play it. Now if he takes with the knight, I'll have to defend this pawn. And he gets this square. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, he's got three different ways to take. He could take with the bishop, the knight, or the rook. I was expecting the rook. <clears throat> Just to keep pressure on the f-file, he can double up with the queen. Um, and maybe that's the way to play it. But if he takes with the knight, he gets this square for the knight, which is pretty good, and he attacks this pawn. Now oh, that pawn is not, um, not going anywhere. That pawn is defended, I mean. Okay, so knight to g3 to uh, defend this square. And now I want to lift my other bishop and bring the rook over to the f-file. Although I guess there's some point to be, some point to the move rook, rook e1, putting pressure on this e3 pawn, which is undefended. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll just lift the bishop so I have the option at least of uh, bringing a rook over to one of these squares. Okay, now he's attacking, double attacking on this pawn. So I defend it. Rook and bishop against uh, queen and bishop. And if he moves this knight out of the way, then I'll have a, uh, I'll have, a I'll have something to decide, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> so now it's triple attacked and only defended, only defended um, twice. But uh, I can push that pawn. Uh, oh, the problem with that is that if I push the pawn, he takes here, I take, and queen comes in check. Very unfortunate, unfortunate. Hmm. Well, I hate to do something so craven as a queen to <laughs> c1, but uh, I don't see anything else right here, so that's what I'm doing. Um, if he can't bring more force to bear, I can play my king up to g2 to defend the knight. So bishop takes, pawn takes, and then the queen does not does not come in with check. He's going to double rooks, so I better do this in a hurry, right? So I lift the king, he brings the rook over, and I can consider at least the move um, f5. And... Uh, after f5, I have the idea of bringing the, the bishop to this square, h6, so that might be good. So let's, but I need to defend this uh, knight first. <clears throat> okay, so f5, he takes, I play my uh, bishop to here. He moves his rook, and then I take back. You can also, yeah, let's try it. 
<clears throat> really, there was there was almost no choice. So sometimes better just to go ahead and play these moves when they're, you feel they're forced. I mean, you can stop and look for alternatives, but uh, sometimes the alternatives are just not there. So throw in this move here, and then I take. He can take back with a pawn. I take. I guess the problem is he can take here and undermine my uh, attempt to win that pawn. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, in exchange for losing the exchange. Okay, so that's the problem here is that uh, bishop takes knight, and I take back, and then the rook takes the bishop here. So I have to defend the bishop somehow. Or move it. Uh, or attack something else. Is there a good attacking move here? <laughs> this guy has uh, done a great job of eliminating uh, eliminating all the counterplay, it looks like. So now he could just push this pawn. He bought himself a, a time with that move. Uh, rook, rook to e8 there it was good. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. Actually, uh, if he pushes, yeah, it's, that's three is enough. And where does my knight go? My poor knight. Yep, uh, okay, so bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes is not good for me. And in any case, I would be losing uh, Losing the poor bishop here. So the knight has one, two, three, four, five, six moves, but only one of them. This is so sad. <laughs> well, there's only one, one square for the knight. Okay, maybe bishop to f3, going after this pawn and skewering the uh, rook and the king. It's an idea. So notice how uh, my opponent got all his pieces into play. One thing you um, do have to watch out for when you win the exchange and you're up material, sometimes um, it doesn't help because your rook is not active, but he's got both his rooks involved in the game, so his extra extra material should be paying off here. Ah, oh, look at that. He defended. Yep, he defended there. Now he's attacking... Um, this pawn on g4, and he's once again threatening to come in here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So if I take here and he goes here, threatening my queen, I take the bishop, he takes my queen, I take his queen, he takes my uh, rook, I take his knight, and I've got two pieces. Oh, and he takes my, uh, he takes my, <laughs> let's, let's, let's do that again. Okay, so, uh, bishop here, knight to there, bishop to there, knight to there, bishop to there. So I've gotten two pieces, a queen and a, but he goes there, and, uh, and my bishop is hanging. And so if I take back, I can either take back or, hmm. <clears throat> I probably have to take back because my bishop is hanging. And then he takes there. So I've got a bishop and a knight, and he's got two rooks. <laughs> so that's pretty good for him. Hmm. Okay, I could just defend this pawn. He comes in here with the knight. And then this pawn is defended again. Uh, 
Um, I play the knight here. That's what I do. That defends this pawn, and it stops the knight from coming into that square. Or I'll exchange it if it comes into that square. <clears throat> maybe, maybe. It's not actually for sure, is it? Now, if I don't exchange, see, if I do exchange, what I don't like about exchanging is he gets two pawns side by side, and I can't win that pawn. It's still defended. So I don't really want to do that. So let's... Um, Treat the queen to that square. I didn't want the queen to go into a pin on this file, so that's why I didn't move to uh, e1, which is where I wanted to move it to first. So my idea is bishop to um, f3 and try and... Uh, yeah, I still am not winning this guy. Maybe bishop f3, rook e1, and then, then threaten to take there. Yeah, so he just takes right away. So I assume I go there. That's defended, but um, let's stop and put some pressure on his uh, e-pawn here. So I noticed he, he spent a lot of time thinking. He, he came up with a good plan and got a real advantage, but now he's short on time, so he's playing pretty much on the increment. Okay, that defends that pawn, yeah. And what can I do? I can't take here, can I? He comes back with the bishop. I want to be able to get more pressure on this uh, guy, and I don't see how to do it. And maybe just exchange the rooks off. Check. <clears throat> so now uh, this this uh, pawn is a bit loose. So I have uh, two bishops. Ah, look at that. So let's think about this. And if I take, he takes. I take. Uh, and as Rick can't go there with check, he can go here. I get my pawn back at least. Why not? <clears throat> Okay, queen. So the queen can take. Where is that rook going? <clears throat> Sometimes two two bishops can harass a rook. It's worth worthwhile trying. Or I could exchange and then attack that pawn. So bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop, queen to this square, hitting that pawn. And the uh, rook can defend this way. And then now, uh, do I have anything? I don't really see it. Okay, let's try harassing the rook. He can't go to these squares. He can go there or there, or he can go sideways. So he goes back. If he goes back, then I have this check here. Check. It's the advantage of having more time. You can think of these things. So then I have this move queen g4. So it's a attack here, threatening uh, this check. Check. So I'm sure uh, Zaki is a much stronger player than I am at slow time controls. I just got lucky here Black at the end resigns. in time trouble. So, hey, good game. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll follow up with a postmortem shortly. Bye.